Hello everyone, in this video I'll be showing you the best microphone settings in OBS studios to make your mic sound like a professional studio grade mic. This will work for any type of setup and without any plugins in OBS itself. There are three things we first got to consider here. Your own personal voice, this is something you can't change. Your microphone is another thing, you could change it, but we're gonna show you some different filters to make it sound amazing. And the third thing is the environment. This is something that's the easiest to change. If you're in a room with nothing in it, no carpet, blank walls, glass, it's gonna sound a lot more rough than if you have carpet flooring and curtains and things that are gonna be able to absorb the noise and make it not reverberate so much. So making your setup a priority is one of the things you should definitely do, but in this video, we'll be focusing on making the mic sound good. Your own voice, we can make any voice sound amazing. So I have a bunch of different filters here and for the ease of use, I am not gonna bring over the OBS studios there. I'll just make it a little bit easier just to drag the windows off to the side. But the first thing we wanna go through is the settings here. So this is just a button you can press right there and this is gonna pull up this menu here. Now on your output, this is important for your video settings, but the audio below it here is gonna have a few different options. So I always have my microphone number one here set as whatever you're using. So I'm using an audio interface to make this happen, but you're gonna see your microphone set here or any of the other items that you have plugged into your computer. Make sure that the microphone one is selected as the mic that you're intending to use. Now all the rest of this stuff, have your sample rate at 48K Hertz, um, your DK rate fast, and everything else seems to be fine. Now you can use your monitoring device. This is gonna be so that you can hear yourself. I recommend plugging headphones in and listening to your voice live when you do these adjustments. It's gonna make it a lot easier. Alternatively, if you don't like doing that, you can just record it and check it over after the fact. Now on top of this also, we got a few different options here we can just ignore. Most of what we're gonna be doing is actually gonna be underneath our audio settings here. So you can see I dragged my audio over to just right here on my desktop. And this is the microphone here. You can see that we're commonly in the yellow here, even when I'm looking away or if I'm staring right into the microphone. What we're gonna be doing is clicking on this here and this is gonna bring up a few different menus. So the first thing we wanna go to is the advanced audio properties. This is gonna pull up another menu here. And what this does is it's gonna show your microphone here and your desktop audio. Having it at, I like to have my desktop at around minus 30 decibels here and then having the microphone at just below um, your max decibel, just in case that you do have some issues here and it will come crashing down and make it redline. We don't want that. But here's the audio monitoring. So you can go with the monitor and output or monitor off, depending if you wanna hear it yourself live. If you're gonna be doing any type of streaming or recording, you're obviously gonna turn that off, but something like this works well. Also, you can see here the sync offset. This is important because if you're using a different type of webcam, like for example, I'm using a Sony ZV-E10 camera, I do need a bit of an offset to make sure that it doesn't have my voice out of sync with what I'm saying. So for me, I just found that the 20 milliseconds worked well. This is something you gotta test yourself. Every camera and every microphone is gonna be different, so that's something just to keep in mind if you find that you may be having a bit of a syncing issue here, but this is just how to check the audio. Make sure that it is checked off as the track. And another thing here, if you have an audio interface, I have it all set up through a different program, but you can also click here to make it mono. So if you are recording, you don't hear it out of one side of your headphones, turn it into mono audio so it puts it into both. Um, this is important if you're, let's say, using a guitar and a microphone and two different separate channels, um, then you wouldn't use the mono, but for most intents and purposes, I would recommend having the mono on if you're having the issue of it coming through just one headphone. But that's the first part here. Next, we're gonna go back to our microphone here and we're gonna get into one of the most important settings here. So you're gonna go under the filters. This is gonna bring up a menu here that you just saw. And with this, it has a bunch of different ones. Now, I guess I'll start off with the noise suppression. I used this in the past. There's a few options. So I have an NVIDIA graphics card. For some reason, I don't have NVIDIA options there. If you don't have a good graphics card, you can use the speaks there, low CPU usage, otherwise the RNN noise, which has a slightly higher CPU usage. So just be mindful if you're playing games like Cyberpunk or Dragon's Dogma 2, anything with a high CPU usage, it's gonna have some issues potentially with that. So I personally just turn it off so you can see that little eyeball icon there. I turn it off, I have it on here now and then I'll turn it back off. So I really don't like using this too, too much. The first thing I think we should work on is the compressor here. So this is the settings that I'm currently using on mine. I'll make it a little bit larger there so you can see. And you always wanna have it so that you can see your audio mixer too. So the nice thing with OBS is you can drag it around to different monitors as well. So with this, I have my ratio set to three. Now, some people like to go with four, but there are some issues that can pop up if you have your ratio too high. What can happen is if you're saying words that are a little bit lighter on the start, like if you say hug, for example, like the light hug noise, 
if you have your ratio too high, it can cut off the start of the word. So if you find that your words are getting cut off, you can reduce this a little bit. Now, it's something you got to play around with the compressor. So the output gain, I found to be, if you're looking, let's say, away from the microphone and talking, like I am now, and I'm kind of blocking it, you're going to want to try and bring this up. So without it at anything, go, going to bring it all the way up here, and it's going to boost the gain. So whenever you're um, talking and not facing the microphone, it's going to, or any type of quieter talking, it's going to boost that gain up. Now I do it so that when you're doing your quietest way of talking, you want to see this yellow zone being filled out. Whether if you have it lower, it may not work properly. So for example, if we go into whisper and then I start bringing it lower and lower, you're going to see it disappears. So I found personally for my voice, I'm um, putting it a little bit too high there. We went with something like around the plus three decibels. It really just depends again on your voice. And that's why I recommend testing this a lot and using the monitoring to get this right. The release, I like to have it around 100 milliseconds there, somewhere around there. The attack, you want it low. I have it one or two often. And then for the threshold, this is important. When it comes to the threshold, it's best to start it actually at the very right-hand side here and be as loud as possible. And you're going to be, just simulate yourself talking as loud as you would. And you're going to keep dragging it down here until you're able to get it within the yellow zone. For me, it's somewhere around the minus 15 to minus 20, as loud as I can be. And you can see here, we're no longer going into the red. So that's exactly what you want to do there for the compressor and followed in those steps. In a similar vein, I also like to have the limiter on and have it just to a minus 0.1 decibel here. This is just to make sure that we don't go past the red line there and lose any type of data associated to the audio. So that's just a simple way of doing it. And then also having the release at 60 milliseconds. Into the expander here, the first thing we're going to be looking at is the threshold. Now, this is for whenever, let's say you're typing away on your keyboard or using a controller. It may have some clicking and noises that you just don't want to have on your audio. So you're first going to bring this all the way over here and you're just going to... You can see that it's still popping up on my microphone there. So what you're going to do is continually keep typing away and bringing this up until you find it goes away. So once you find that the little tiny noises aren't now in your audio, that's where it's going to be. That's where you're going to want to have it set to. For the most part, I find around minus 35, 40 ish will be fine. Otherwise, you get into cutting out your own audio if you put this too high or too low. So I found that around here worked best for myself. Uh, so you'll likely be somewhere in this ballpark. But again, everyone's setup, voice, and microphone will be different. And next is the output gain. So I like to have my attack at 2 milliseconds, the release at anywhere from 50 to 100, somewhere around there, I have 99. And then for the output gain. So you can see down here, if we put this lower, my voice is now in the green. It sounded very dull. As you start to bring this up, you want to have it so that even when you're talking away from the microphone, it's going to bring up your audio. So for me, I with the microphone that I'm using, which is an Electro Voice RE20, I like to have this a little bit higher, but you may not need it that high. And for the output gain, you want to talk quietly into the microphone. So you can see here, even when I'm quieter, it's starting to push it upwards into that yellow mark. Now we likely want to get this somewhere around the minus 15 to minus 10. That's going to be ideal. So something like this can work well. Now there's another one that we can use called gain. I personally don't use the gain too much. So you can put the gain filter there and increase it as you see fit. I find that with the other filter options that I just personally don't need gain. I also have an audio interface. So there's a bit of gain coming through that. Again, entirely dependent on your microphone. So you may want to play around with the gain to see if it gives you a sound that sounds better to you. But for the most part, I find it not to be necessary. The final one is actually quite a big one. Now, the way that we want to set this up is we want to have our three band equalizer at the top. So these have a priority ranking. So three band equalizer at the top, the expander next, then the compressor, and then the limiter. I found that this one is the best setup for it uh, with the three band equalizer. This is something that you can play around with. It can give you a really cool sounding voice. You're going to hear what it does on my voice here. I have a very deep and, and bassy voice. So I actually reduce my lows. But you can see here, if I were to put my lows up even higher, it makes my voice sound a lot thicker, muddy. I don't like this sound at all. Let me know your thoughts, though. But I personally prefer to have my low ends removed a little bit down to the minus one. Now, with the mids, I don't love to move the mids around too much. It can give your voice sounding a bit hollow. Some people like it to give them the uh, announcer broadcast sounding voice. So I'll show you here what the mids going up sounds like. And you can play around with this yourself again, going through and listening to what it sounds like. And here's the mids going lower. 
Personally, I don't mess around with this too much. I find that it's just fine just where it's at with the zero decibels. And for the highs, you can either slightly boost these or leave them alone. Again, this is entirely, this is the one that's the most dependent on your voice and how you sound. If you've got a very high pitched voice, it's going to be very much different from what I have here. This is something you're going to play to ear. It's not a well, XYZ is right like some of the other ones where you want to have them in specific ranges. This is one that it's down to your own flavor of your voice and how you want it to come across. You can either emphasize your strong points. So here again is the highs going up. And you can see this sounds kind of, I, I don't like the sound of it too, too much when I go too high there or too low with the highs. But again, this is something I want to put around zero and minus one on the lows. This is just what I find works best for my personal voice. And what's cool is you can always just press the eyeball here to get an idea of what it sounds like without the filter and then with the filter back on. So yeah, a lot of these can make a huge difference in your overall audio quality. I will be doing a future video talking about Reaper and how to EQ your voice, but that's a bit further. Not everyone needs to use that. You can be just totally fine with these audio filters here. But if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Hit the subscribe button if you enjoyed and found this video useful. And I hope you have an incredible day. We'll catch you in the next one.